But you know why? You know why I can respect the world? The world will ask me, girl, it's 90 degrees out here. Why you got a long sleeve? <laughs> then I have an opportunity to share a health message with them. And then the dress reform, because we act like, duh. Yes. We don't see the dress reform in God's word, but it is. And I get to tell them, because the Lord said, when we're equally clad, and our limbs are clothed, and our arms are clothed, that we have an equal distribution of circulation, and the blood is not thrown upon the internal organs of the torso. And that way, our blood can circulate freely, and good health will be ensured. But it's hot. That's why I wear natural fibers, because now my skin can breathe, and when a cool wind blows and there's sweat up under there, I get an instant fan. Is this what the old message used to sound like? I don't know. I've only been at Venice five years. Is this what the old landmark message used to sound like? That's what it used to be. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. But these are truths that are in the world. You study the sanctuary. The sanctuary has every truth but Even if I put the spirit of prophecy away and study my Bible like Sister White said we should have, there would have never been a need for the spirit of prophecy. When we look at the sanctuary, the priest didn't roll up in there in a tank top. <laughs> he would have been pulled out with that cord, but he would have been dead in the presence of the Shekinah glory of God. And yet we ask the Lord to meet with us. But even better yet, even better yet, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He, we ask him to meet with us. He wants to dwell within. Yet are we coming before him a holy sacrifice without spot or blemish? Have mercy. Let me stay on task over here. But John the Baptist is a type. Okay? Let me get myself together. I almost got way off. Woo! Let me say this. John the Baptist was a standing rebuke, but he was also an encouragement. Because many people were able to see John and hear his message and be called out of Babylon because it was falling. If something is falling, do you want to be in it? Do you want to sit up under it? And I'm going to be real. Many of our ministers are standing here telling you, it's okay. I don't even know the minister here. That's true. I don't. I don't know what he preaches here. But I've, I've been in many churches and I've sat in astonishment of what was coming from the death. My sons have sat in astonishment, and I have to go when we should be eating, trying to explain to them the Bible truth and the spirit of prophecy truth versus what just came from the pulpit. Yes. Right. It should not be, but it is. Tell the truth. But our lives should be a standing reproof. And I would encourage you, if you're sitting up under error, if you're sitting up under leadership that is not giving it straight from the word and the spirit of prophecy, talking about love makes everything all right, you better run for your life. Because it's that serious. It's life and death. Amen. Now we've been talking about being processed. Do we want to be processed Christians, denatured? worldly, listening to the things of the world? Do we want to stay in our process state? It, there's no nutrition in potato chips and gummy bears, but there is nutrition in potatoes and fruit. What fruit are we bearing? Okay? Do we want to be processed in to the kingdom? Do we want to continue on that journey? Because another definition for process means to be refined. And the Lord is trying to refine us. We think, the refiner's fire, but we don't want to die. We don't want to feel any pain in giving up things of the world. We want to stay in our status quo and say, yeah, Lord, I'm with you. I'm making it in. But let's be processed into the kingdom. Let's take a look at Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6. Because I'm going to tell you, to be processed in, you must be different. You must be peculiar. You must not adopt the things of the world. You must not have the ways of the world. You must come out of her. Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6. 
and it reads, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. I'm speaking to you, Israel. Yes. But it's some conditions for this promise. See, when we read in 2 Peter 9 through 11, that we are a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. In that rendering of it, it's just quoting the Old Testament. But here it makes it clear that in order to be a holy nation or a peculiar people, that there are conditions. We have to obey his voice and keep his covenant. Health reform is part of that. The way you eat, dress, drink, speak, do is part of obeying his voice. If you are not obeying on those points, then you are none of his. You wicked and slothful servant, he will say to many of us. And I say many because that's what the word says. But we don't want to be like that. In order to be processed into the kingdom, we must be peculiar. Peculiar people are pure in their diets, in their lifestyle. Peculiar people are ready to accept everything that God has for them. Let me make it simple for you. You hear it all the time. Peculiar in your diet. Fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, and vegetables. No flesh. No chicken, no fish. Let me also make it even more simple. Babylon the Great is falling. Those who worship the image of what? The beast. The beast? Mm -hmm. Why are we making images to the beast in our diets? Why are we eating veggie chick nuggets? Come on. Come on. Why are we eating veggie steaks, veggie fish fillets, veggie cranks, veggie mess? Why are we eating the image to the beast? Veggie shrimp? Unclean animals, but we wanna we wanna mimic. See, that's how bad, that's how much we've been processed while we're eating this processed veggie food. We think we're doing something good, and the Lord is saying, you are still on the wrong path. That stuff is so processed, so full of chemicals and preservatives and salt. Do you know I just downloaded a list on my computer that showed all those Worthington products have genetically modified ingredients in them? Yet we're trying to be pure. Yet if it's not a, a, a turkey loaf or roll on the menu, we mad. Like, ah, this ain't no complete meal. <laughs> and I just, you, you are making an image to the beast in your diet. And the Lord has said, all of those who worship that image to the beast will not enter into the kingdom. Get it off your plate. Get it out your diet. All right. All right. Fruit, grains, nuts, seeds, vegetables. Two meals a day is best. If you must take a third meal, it's because you are a hard, physical, laboring worker. None of us in here fit that criteria. And if somebody does, please talk to me. I would love to know what you do. And then even if you do take a third meal, that meal should be so light, taken at least four to five hours before bedtime because your stomach, like Sister Karen said in Health Spot, is supposed to be empty when you go to bed. And counsel may think, plan it says, take a little fruit with some zwieback, toast or bread. And that means double toasted, crunchy, like a cracker. How many people eating cracker and fruit for dinner? Okay, 